So guys, out of the blue, just in time for the holiday season, the Arma 3 dev team have just released a beta version of a brand new DLC campaign that's set on the Tanoa map. It's called Old Man, and I reckon I've sunk at least 10 hours into it already just in the last day and a half. So guys, this is Billy Eat World again, and let's find out. Alright guys, welcome to the video and like I said today, we're going to be talking about a brand new official campaign for Armour 3. And I know that sounds probably weird because I'm guessing you probably haven't heard anything about it. It definitely wasn't advertised anywhere near as much as, for example, Contact was a few months ago. Part of that probably is because, according to the devs, this one still is technically a beta with the full release coming to the game sometime at a later date. And we'll talk about what that means in just a sec. But look, all in all, even though it is, I guess, not finished, I can tell you it's super addictive and it's definitely the real deal. For a start, and I'm not going to spoil it, but you'll meet up with some iconic characters from the Armour 3 universe. And of course, they're all brilliantly voiced as usual. And not just that, but the devs have, as always, put in a ton of work into fleshing out the locations and things like building interiors to create the atmosphere of a real inhabited conflict zone. Now, also as well, if you remember back to the Contact campaign, the devs made quite a few UI tweaks. And well, there's a couple of new ones in Old Man as well. Nothing quite as extreme, but as you can see here, the devs have added in a smartphone interface on the map screen, and you can access a bunch of cool new features from there as well. Now, honestly, if that's all that Old Man was, I'd still think it's pretty cool. Not as cool as, for example, Contact, but you know, obviously still worth playing. But you see, the thing that really makes this one special is that unlike every other official Armour 3 campaign that's come out beforehand, this one is completely open world. And I know there was some free exploration in the vanilla campaign and in Contact, but it was always limited and the majority of the missions were still very linear. Whereas in Old Man, there's no separate missions at all. Everything takes place on the full Tanoa map and you can go anywhere you want at any time. Now, when you think of open world dynamic games, well, what do you think of? Well, obviously GTA and maybe also games like Far Cry or Just Cause as well, right? And honestly, I think that's exactly where the devs were going with this one. Half the missions you can imagine being in any of those other games. And the setting is obviously right out of Far Cry 3. You're driving around in a tropical paradise. You're raiding enemy camps and you're going around from one objective to another and picking up quests faster than you can complete them. It's basically the 3D action RPG format in a nutshell, except it's Armour 3, which is not only a tactical shooter, but also an indie game, which makes this sort of thing just absolutely mind-blowing. Now, if you're someone who plays community-made missions a fair bit, well, you're probably thinking at this point, look, I've seen this kind of thing before. And I mean, sure, the main scenario is kind of similar to something like WLA, which also, in a very broad sense, is a dynamic open-world campaign. But the problem with WLA though, and a lot of other community-made missions, is that they're often way too bloated and complex for their own good. Whereas, in my opinion, Old Man isn't. And I know it's still in beta, meaning it's obviously not perfect, but by comparison to anything else, it's got things like story arc, and player progression, and the world in general nailed down. For example, you start out with literally nothing and what you have to do at first is complete basic missions to develop relationships with some of the local factions. And from there you can get your first weapons and then you get into your first engagements which start out small and then get a little bit more difficult from there. There's also a currency system so you'll need to collect and trade gear to purchase better items and of course the best gear is always around enemy camps and checkpoints. And not just that, but there's also secret caches located around the map as well that you can find with the new geolocator feature, which starts beeping when you're getting close to them. Now, as you progress through the game, well, here's where the cracks start to appear, because obviously, being that this is a beta, some things just aren't that well balanced yet. For example, Old Man does a pretty good job initially of keeping you out of powerful vehicles, but once you do find yourself an AMRAP with a weapon, well, that gets pretty broken. Also, on the other hand, the engagement scaling is a bit on the crazy side as well. Just like in GTA, when you start taking out enemies, they'll send in more guys to hunt you down. 
and sometimes you'll be thinking you're doing really well clearing out a camp with just an assault rifle, and then bam, out of nowhere, an attack heli will spawn in and start to mow you down. Also, I should mention that gets pretty frustrating because as you'd expect from an armor game, the respawn system is as punishing as it gets. In other words, there isn't one. If you do die, you'll have to reload your game and you can save by resting if you have a sleeping bag, but once you do, it'll consume the item and you'll have to find another sleeping bag to save again. Or, and here's the stupid thing, you can just quit and save the game like that. So in other words, just before you get into a tricky fight, all you have to do is quit the game and reload, which is kind of ridiculous. So basically, I just ended up using a mod that lets you use the debug console in the game, and I just ended up saving the game with a command instead. Now, moving on, that's not the only thing that's kind of annoying about Old Man, and we've seen this before in the previous campaigns, but basically the inventory system is kind of a bit clunky as well. It's okay if you're just dealing with a few items at a time, but I mean, this is a campaign that actively wants you to load up vehicles and sell off spare junk for cash. That's not just a few items. And loading and unloading all of that gear is really time consuming, especially as vehicles are often filled with their own junk, which you have to manually unload. So once again, I just ended up doing all of this with scripts. And honestly, I think if I was ever gonna play through this one again, I'd actually probably try and mod the mission to make this even easier if the devs haven't fixed this by that point. Now, finally, the most annoying thing that I really need to mention about Old Man is like we saw in Contact, the performance, or should I say the lack of performance. And we've always known, right, that the engine isn't very optimized, but you see, it's AI heavy stuff like this that really smashes your CPU. And when that happens, it's about as bad as it can be. The game really just can't cope. Not just that, but Tanoa is a super busy map to begin with. Unlike Altus or Stratus, there's a ton of vegetation and you can't really avoid that unless you're in the air. So look, if you do have a good PC, you might get 60 plus frames on lower settings sometimes, but realistically in most gunfights, you probably will end up dipping down closer to 40 or 50. It's nothing to do with your PC. That's unfortunately just normal for this scenario. Now, bearing all of that in mind, to finish up, if you are an Armour 3 veteran, well, you're probably already used to bad performance, so that's probably not going to bother you too much. But the question is, what about those other few little annoying things I mentioned earlier? Is Old Man still worth buying even with those things? And, well, the answer is, you don't have to buy it. Turns out this is actually free DLC, assuming, of course, you already own Armour 3 and Apex, which includes the Tanoa map. So yes, it is worth paying zero dollars for, which I mean kind of makes you overlook a lot of the bigger flaws it might have compared to say, for example, a regular AAA action RPG. So the real question is then, how do you even get it? Because you'll notice it's not listed in the regular DLC section on the store page, like for example, Contact is. What you'll need to do instead is search for Old Man in the Armour 3 Steam Workshop, and you'll need to subscribe to it from there, which means you'll also need to load it as a mod in the launcher. Now, according to the devs, they're planning on adding it to the base game in a future update, and the good news is, as far as we know, it's still gonna be free even when that happens. And look, fingers crossed when it does officially come out, it'll be even better balanced by then as well. And while well, considering how replayable I think it already is, I reckon I'll probably give it another go then to find out. And you know what, I might even make another video, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, guys, that just about wraps up this review. So as always, make sure you let me know what you think in the comments section down below. What do you think of Old Man? Do you like the whole idea of Armour 3 campaigns in a sandbox format, or would you prefer them to be like the traditional campaigns we've seen in the last couple of years? As always, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And also, don't forget, you can find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch. And as always, until next time, see you later, and have a good one.